Shalom Aleichem, my dear friends. I am Alevsky here from Chabad Family Program to the West Side, New York City, in Central Park. Enjoying the heat, the summer heat. Today's a very special day on the Jewish calendar. It is a day full of light and life. It's the fifth day five of the Hebrew month, the Jewish month of Av. Hey Av. It's the yard site, the date of the passing of one of the greatest men who ever lived. He's known to the world as the Arizal. The Ari. Ari. What is Ari? The Ari is an acronym of his name. His name was Rabbi Yitzchak. And oftentimes people of the past are known by their names like Rashi. Rashi, everyone knows him as Rashi. But his name is really Rabbi Shlomo Yitzchaki. So here, and the Rambam is Rabbi Moshe Ben Maimon. And this man's name was, he was known as the Arizal. Now what is Ari? His name was Rabbi Yitzchak. So, what is the Aleph? Ar, before the, before his name, before the Rabbi Yitzchak. So first of all, Ari in Hebrew means lion. He was known as the lion. And also, the Aleph symbolized a name that no other human was given or it didn't stick to any other human aside from him. The Aleph stands for the word Eloki, godly. When they first gave him the name, when they coined him the Arizal, they said Ha Eloki, the godly man, Rabbi Yitzchak. Later on, there was some concern about calling him the godly man. Maybe it might be understood wrongly. So they adapted it to the Ashkenazi. Uh, for the Aleph turned into the Ashkenazi. And also Adonenu, which is more common, our master, our teacher. Okay, so we have the Arizal's yard site, his date of his passing. Something a little bit about it. He lived in the 1500s. He was the greatest Kabbalist since Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the author of the Zohar, undisputedly and expounded on the Kabbalistic teachings throughout the history of the generations. There were even halachic items that were questionable, that were questions, that were in dispute among the great rabbis. And they followed whatever the Ari said, his customs, his actions, Everyone followed him undisputedly, um, even the halakhic authorities. <clears throat> he was known as a godly man so much his students recorded or they proclaimed that past, present, and future were open before him. He was able to tell the known and the unknown. The unknown he was able to look into people's lives and tell them what Gilgul they're from, what reincarnation they're from, and if they're a new soul or an old one, a recycled one, as we pretty much all are today. He was able to, his students testify that he was able to read, to relay a person's thoughts before the person actually thought them. So he would say, mention it to somebody else. This person will be thinking this sometime in the future. And that's what happened, etc., etc. Past, present, and future were open before him. He was a miracle worker. He secluded himself for many years in his youth, and he came back and took the world by storm. There's also a story about, his, about Elijah the prophet, Elio Hanabi, appearing to his father before he was born telling him that a special boy will be born and he will illuminate the world. 
etc. His teachings, the Rizal wrote very, very Kamba Arizal. Arizal. It's mostly common, most commonly known name. Zal is Zechrono Livracha. May his memory be blessed. Or his, the mention of his name should bring blessing. Uh, Rizal had very little writing himself. He, all his teachings were transmitted by his students, aside from a select few. And his main student that was given permission to write his teachings while he was saying them. He was teaching them was, his name was Chaim, Reb Chaim Avital. Reb Chaim Avital, I'm sorry. Reb Chaim Avital. And he's the main author of the teachings of the Arizal. So, the Rebbe, our Rebbe, spoke about the Arizal many times. The whole mystical world today, pretty much, is based on the Arizal's teachings. And the Rebbe celebrated his life and teachings very you know, clearly, enthusiastically. The Siddur that the Chabad people use. If you ever open up the Siddur, you'll see our Siddur is Alpin Nusach Arizal. It's actually the version of Siddur that the Arizal created. And the Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe, compiled it and tweaked maybe some minor tweaks. But it is essentially the Chabad Siddur is the Arizal's Siddur. The Rebbe talks about Arizal. He says something interesting. Usually the Rebbe's talks are more philosophical. This one, in this specific part, he actually he uses the, the world of gematria to teach something. Gematria is the numerical value of something. So he says the name Arizal, I'm sorry, the name Yitzhak has the numerical value of 208. 208 is the numerical value from, of the word Arbe. Arbe means I will increase. Arbe, Arbe is Hashem. When God said to the Jewish people, I will increase your children, he said to Avram, to Abram, I will increase your children. He used the word Arbe. And the Rebbe said, the numerical value of Yitzhak to the word increase is a strong connection because the Arizal increased a lot in this world, increased light into this world. And he also, the Rebbe said, he increased things in our physical body. So when you study the teachings, any teachings really, but now we're talking about the mystical teachings of the Arizal, and especially the Rebbe says, the way they're framed and expounded upon and emphasized and elaborated and illuminated by Chabad Hasidus, which we are going to do now, momentarily. The Rebbe says that it creates, it's known that it creates new pathways in the brain. It literally changes the matter of the brain. Uh, it's called scientifically, it's called neurogenesis where new links are formed in the brain. And the Rebbe says that, so the Arizal created expansion in this world, in our brain, and most importantly, it's meant to affect our actions and our day-to-day -day life, which the study of Hasidus is very helpful in doing. So the Rebbe encouraged us to use this day, this date, to learn more Hasidus. The Rebbe also said that the name Yitzchak has as we said, the numerical value is 208. It's also, it's the numerical value of God's main name, which is Yud and Ahay and Avav and Ahay, which is 26 times eight. It's eight times 26, it's 208. So the Rebbe said, the Arizal brought a light of God into this world that is eight times the strength of the light of God not stronger than God, but eight times of that. And he explained that in many places it's explained that the number eight represents the supernatural. Seven represents the nature, the system of nature. There's seven days of the week. Every physical object has seven dimensions to it. There's up, down, right, left, front, back, and the center. 
It's the seven and eight is always above nature, like Hanukkah, Shemini Atzeres, etc., etc. So the Rebbe says that the Arizal brought this supernatural light into this world for us to benefit. Now, we're going to dive into one short thought that the Rebbe said in 1951. And the Rebbe's unique way to learn something from everything, as the Baal Shem Tov taught. The Rebbe started off with a question and said, he said, how is it that we, the Jewish people, if we look among the nations of the world, we're the smallest. One can easily despair and feel, what am I, what is my effort worth? How, why do I matter? Why do I matter? What are my efforts worth? What can I do to change this world? I'm the, we are the fewest of the nations, the smallest of the nations. And within the Jewish people itself, those who observe the Torah and the mitzvahs to the letter of the law are the fewest among the Jews. And within ourselves, even somebody who does observe 100% to the letter of the law, even in our own body makeup, in our own human experience, the time that we dedicate to spiritual matters is the smallest amount of time. It's the least relative to all the other physical things that we take care of in our lives. So few, 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 little, little, little. What benefit is there for us even trying to make a dent and to continue and to observe, etc. This was in 1951. In 1946, the atom bomb exploded. The first atom bomb. The Rebbe said that the technology of the world brings an answer to this question. It says we take something as small as the atom, which is in technically invisible, and if we bring a little bittle into it, we split it. Bittle means self-nullification. Remove the ego, split it, divide it. It generates a force that can literally change the world. And the Rebbe said that we learn from this atom, from the splitting of atom, that we too, every deed we do, every mitzvah we do, can change the world for good. And the Rebbe said, at the time, unfortunately, the atom was used, the splitting of the atom was used for a negative, a negative purpose. But our prayerful wishes is that it should be used for positive, bring positive change to this world. And then that, that's the Rebbe's talk. And that reminded me, the Rebbe also asked us to study the Rambam, daily Rambam. In the, there's different chapters, there's different cycles, there's three chapters a day, one chapter a day. There's just one halacha a day, one law a day. So in yesterday's, or today's Rambam, which I studied, it actually talks about that the Rambam says that a person should see himself as if he or she is on a, a level scale where all the negative of the world is on one side and all the positive is on the other side. And every thought, speech, or action is able to over tip the scale, outweigh the scale. Shalom Aleichem. We got a dry tour over here and we see some nice from Jews over here in Central Park. So the Rebbe says that every, every thought, I'm sorry, the Rambam says that every thought, speech, and action we do can literally tip the scale and bring Yeshua Vatsala, salvation and redemption to the whole world because we're all connected and the whole world is one. So the Rebbe was our atomic nuclear reactor and I'd brave it to say it 
that he activated all of us, you and I, and he requested us to split our atom and go out there and affect our community. And in the word communities, there is the word unity because the world is all, all really one because we are all one. And when we affect one good deed or one person for the good, it affects the whole world for the good. And you help one person satiate their hunger. In some way, you're bringing satisfaction to the rest of the world. When you say a kind word to one person, you're bringing kindness to the whole world. Let's do it. God bless you. Share. Come again. Oh.